Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, out on another walk. And this time I'm in, oh, I'm still in West Sussex. Yes, I had to think about that, yes, didn't I? Yes, you are in West Sussex I'm still Sussex in West indeed. Sussex, just outside Henfield, um, and I have come to visit the Sussex Prairie Gardens. And with me is Pauline McBride. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pauline. Hello, now, welcome. Pauline, this is your business. This is your farm, isn't it? Well, it is. <laughs> and uh, actually, you've come in a very auspicious year because it's our 10th year since oh, right. we planted the garden. Oh, fantastic. So there's a little bit of a birthday feel about us today. Oh, well, I'm very excited to come on your birthday. <laughs> I, I should have bought presents. <laughs> yeah, however, however, there is lots to explore. So shall yes, we, shall yes, we go? Yes, let's go. This is, go. I believe, this is the main entrance that we're coming exactly into. the new tropical south garden which we planted this year and full of wonderful tropical plants uh, in their first stages of their development but we've got a few wonders to see and of course very voluptuous lush tropical plantings big bananas uh, palm trees but I'm going to show you a plant that might scare your socks off. Oh golly. And it's just around this corner. <coughs> right, you lead the way yeah. and I will follow. Uh, everything looks remarkably Colourful. look at that, yes, absolutely. It it all looks remarkably lush, you know, there's no other way of describing it. Uh, yeah, especially here we, are. here we are. Oh right, here we go. This plant here is L the five minute plant. If you eat the fruits of this plant, this one with the spiky stems it's advertising it's dangerous right and indeed it is because if you eat the fruit of this plant you have five minutes to live oh my goodness so beware of the fruits right at the moment no fruits we're we're safe but the plant does all it can to say do not touch me do not eat me of course here we have the squirting cucumbers I, i'm sorry the squirting, squirting cucumbers. cucumbers let's now, go look, and have a look they're getting at ready but they can inadvertently squirt you. They're safe. They're not going to harm right. you in any way. But they're just a bit of fun. You know, as you're passing by, yes. you might get a quick squirt oh, from right. the cucumbers. How do they know? By shadow it, or by no, it's, the proximity? It's just, it's just how, when they get right. Oh, when they get right, explode. they just suddenly explode. <laughs> And by Exploding chance, you might be, cucumbers. You might be passing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Right, we're heading off past, uh, into the woodland and actually we're just passing by the pigs. Ooh. We've got two middle white pigs here and the boys and they're relaxing as you can see. Oh yeah. All the weeds from the garden go to the pigs. They're, oh, like, right. they're like living compost bins. The pigs. Oh, what a brilliant. Well, oh, how we are. Here's Do they one. have names? Well, they're called sausage and bacon. <laughs> I thought you were going to say sausage and mash. They're <laughs> sausage and bacon. Hello, who are you? Are you sausage it or bacon? It could be sausage. It could be either. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hello. But they're quite cute. They're, they're quite cute. Yeah, very they cute. They like to have a bit of a scratch on their back, don't you, sweetheart? Oh, bless. Those are sweethearts. I have to say, they are one of the animals that I would love to own. This is the most dramatic bit because we're coming out of the out of the cool, woodland. shady woodland. Yes. And we see the colour of our prairie. So this this is the piece de resistance, piece as it were. Piece de resistance. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, and look at that. That is amazing. Yeah. And um, I read on your website it was really you and a few volunteers, friends and family. Yes, we that... managed to persuade uh, about 60 actually friends and family to come and plant the whole garden with us. Gosh. In May 2008. Obviously, we had to give them a good party every night because they were here for two and a half weeks, remember? Oh, Camping, in tents, in caravans. And, that is uh, incredible. That's mad. They, uh, they are what really helped us make this garden. And that's really the, the wondrous thing behind it. You know, yes. Out in this garden, there's a tiny bit of all those people who loved us and wanted to be part of this project. So um, that's what makes it special. Gosh. But uh, you can see the uh, results of their efforts here. Absolutely stunning colours. Big groups of the varieties of plants, gives real impact and colour. And today we've got bees out in abundance. We'll have a look at them, some of those on the plants later. And of course, our signature plant, the Echinacea, a real prairie, North American prairie plant, out in full flower at the moment. But and we're going to walk through the pathways here. They're quite narrow, but the wondrous thing is that it gets you encompassed right inside the plantings. Oh, right. So you get that special relationship 
how do you maintain this throughout the year? I mean, particularly on a, a year like this where we've had unprecedented sunshine. Well, this has been a very tricky year for us uh, and it has been about w watering. Um, we are on very heavy clay soil, so normally that all that winter rain would have been absorbed into the clay and it's like a sponge. Right. This year, uh, somehow or other, all that water has gone really, really quickly. So we were left with the uh, dilemma that we had to do something to save our garden, so we have to start watering. Yes. And we are watering, in fact, 24 hours a day Heavens. to maintain our garden because yes. we have to keep it looking beautiful. Visitors are coming, they expect to see of course. a beautiful garden. Yes. No one's coming to see a wilting no. mess. No, so we have, to, we have to keep watering. Uh, but what we do is water very in concentrated blocks of 12 hours at a time. Right. And then we move on. It takes six weeks to get oh, down see. the whole garden. Oh, right. So that the so clay get, will then absorb and it will, hold that it water. It will hold it water for a significant amount of time. And the plants will have to do what they can with Heavens. what they've got. Wow. These plants are pretty resilient. Um, we've picked varieties that can cope with these conditions. Maybe not quite such an extreme condition, but certainly one in which we can uh, rely on them to keep flowering, to look wonderful, and to do it with uh, the minimal uh, amount of watering. So bees must love this site. Yeah, not just bees, of course, things like hoverflies and other flying insects. We try and do our bit in this style of planting. It's very uh, wildlife friendly. Yes, gosh. Yes, you can, I mean, you can see all the bees and they're, they're absolutely manic. We, we keep getting told on the news that there's a shortage of bees. And well, that... indeed, they are under threat and a pressure. So anything we can do to help uh, support them, of course, is uh, what we can do. But here they are working on this persicaria. Lovely, loads of them, actually. Gosh. Little small ones, little tiny ones. And I don't know if you can hear that, ladies and gentlemen. There's a definite buzz. Definite <laughs> There's a buzz. Definite buzz. And when you started this project, did you really know that it was going to come to be so grand as this? Um, well, we, we always... I mean, presumably you planned it to do we, that. <laughs> we always, when we drew up the plans for the garden, obviously it was this scale, on this scale. And um, yeah, we always had this idea that it would be this big. Uh, we had been working with the plants for many years, um, designing gardens for other people, trying out our ideas right. on other people's gardens in, in truth. You've got so lots big of... grass is a part of the design, of course, which are, again, big impact, height, structure, yes. and will later on, when they come into flower, give a whole different um, sense of uh, lightness to the garden, in fact, because they have their sort of airiness about them. At the moment, it's big colour through flowers, but the big grasses give that height and impact through architectural height as well. So there's a lot of thought. It doesn't just happen, does it? No, it is all designed. I mean, Paul and I had some very big bits of paper and spent hours designing this garden, but we wanted to have a very loose, uh, wild, romantic feel about it as well. And I notice as we're going through this, this sort of corridor here, the lawn corridor, yeah. if you like, um, you've got a lot of sculpture as well, yeah. which is, uh, you know, that obviously from that sort of period uh, from that sort of region yes well the artist who's made many of these sculptures Rafael Berrio is uh, from South America and he has an amazing uh, collection which I now have here <laughs> <laughs> and they just work don't they yeah here? I, they... Just, I, I think they fit in but uh, yeah, I mean I mean look at this crazy looking yes. uh, what bird, a bird of prey eagle yes pterodactyl possibly yeah. Um, all made from driftwood. It's, yes. it's, you know, it is And remarkable. also, you know, you've got the shell, the stone detail and the sort of necklace above it. What I want to show you, these lovely heads as well. Another local sculptor, David Price, has made these beautiful heads. Oh, a bit like the Easter Island it, heads. Yeah, yeah, in a little way. In yeah, a, in a, they're, yeah, they're, they're a lot they're smaller, they're, obviously. <laughs> but they are super. I think we've got a lot to offer. I think there's a sort of, people, people find the garden very calming and uh, walking through it, as we're just about to do again, uh, does seem to relax people. They, they feel, um, feel, feel relaxed, um, can run their fingers through the grasses, yes. literally. And the fact that people can just roam um, freely 
is, is clearly part of the uh, ethos. Oh, you've got a little got three ponds here. little so pond. Let's have a pond. little look down here. These plants have done amazing. These gunnera plants have done amazingly this year. And the gunnera is these very large leafed. Tro very tropical feeling again, but amazing structure to the leaf. You can hear it, hear oh, the yeah. noise of it, how wow. tough it is. Yeah, like cardboard yeah. almost, isn't it? Or <laughs> leather. You look at the size of that leaf. This is the absolute miracle of this garden because if I haven't even told you the most exciting bit yet, oh, right. how we actually look after the garden, which is to set the whole thing on fire. To set the whole thing on fire? To burn the whole garden down every year, January, February time, the whole thing gets consumed by flames. Goodness. Flames coursing through across all the dry material because by then uh, we'll have had a winter, of course. Yes. Frost will have dried the garden becomes like a tinderbox oh, right. ready to be set on fire and uh, all this material will have dried right out become very crisp and ready to set on fire and wind is the key for managing this oh see so you're waiting for a good windy event. day so Paul and I start to look at the weather very closely in January February we get a bit obsessed with the weather forecast because we're waiting for about a week of dry which is tricky in yes January, February, yes. as you might imagine, and um, waiting for wind, wind from the southwest ideally, because we want to burn from that way across the whole garden, Gosh. but in chunks, nice manageable chunks yes. hopefully, it yes. doesn't go too crazy, and uh, it takes about five days in total to burn the whole garden down. And the purpose, people are the going purpose, to be sitting, why? why, why are you doing this? First of all, it's great fun. Yeah, well, no, yeah, okay. It's, no, it's more than that. If, if we were to cut this all by hand, you know, fannying around with a pair yeah. of secateurs, it would take forever. Right. So we have to find a way in which we can manage such a big monster garden uh, in an easier, easier way. And burning is the key because it quickly consumes everything. It means that we don't have to cart vast right. quantities of material away. And presumably it puts a lot of goodness back in, does it? Potash goes down, so uh -huh. it's incredibly good for the garden. Yes. And it seems to give a vigour to the plants as well, I think. So you does know, that mean that you replant everything? No. no. These are what they call herbaceous perennials, which means they're going to come back every year. So when I look at that leaf, I think of that leaf. That All that leaf has grown in one well, since January, February, that amazing size leaf, all that energy and absolute creation has come in a few short months. Gosh. That to me is a miracle, absolute miracle. Anyway, let's go in here. More bees working. And they're so busy working that they're not paying any attention to us, you know. Clearly you can spend hours <laughs> here. And are people able to get information about the individual plants from you in case they want to do oh. this at home a little bit? We don't have, um, this is not a garden sort of labelled up like a botanic garden. No. That has to be said. We're going to, we maybe have to avoid the water. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we have, we have a small select amount of labels, but we have a great team here working with us and where we have plants for sale we mark them in the garden and you can come into the plant sales nursery and we'll help you find those plants. Oh wow, here we are, look, there's the buffalo. Brilliant, well, that, that, you know, the way that that metal has rusted it gives yeah, it a, it's such a fantastic... Corten steel, so it's going to have that rusty look. Rusty look. Are you almost expecting those buffalo to sort of whiz on past, you know, <laughs> grazing stop. on the ground. <laughs> start moving yeah well Pauline thank you once again and um, as I say come along we'll put the details of the website and how to get there and all that kind of stuff below in the description so from me the bald explorer and Pauline McBride thank yeah, you so thank much you. It's thanks been great. for coming oh, it's lovely no, my, my pleasure good to give, give you an experience yes. a bit out of the ordinary hopefully a absolutely <laughs> till next time then goodbye bye <laughs>